Thanks for joining us for today's message. If you'd like to support this resource and others like it, you can do so by visiting our website, thechapel.cc, and select the giving option that works best for you. Enjoy the message. Hey, I'm excited today that we get a chance to take our next step in this series that we've been uh, discussing called, uh, What Are We Even Doing? Like you have to pause there for dramatic effect, you know? So uh, a few weeks ago, we talked, and I told you my daughter started preschool, right? Are you still praying for me, by the way? Cool. So I had that moment this week where her teacher said, hey, hey, Mr. Rogers. I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> so apparently they were painting in preschool this week. Famous last words, right? And so she says, hey, you, you know, we were painting, and, and your daughter was painting, and, and, and she went from painting on the popsicle sticks to painting on her arms. <laughs> and her arms were green. But my baby girl, she didn't stop there. She then taught everybody else in the class how to paint their arms green, too. <laughs> Come on. I've never been a more proud father, let me tell you. I just looked at her teacher, I said, hey, she's a leader. She's a leader. She's a leader. I was like, I'm just sorry. We're working on making sure she leads in the right direction. Come on, come on. Oh, we talk, we're talking about what in the world are we doing? And, and in the first week of this series, Pastor Q took some time to talk about how uh, our lives really don't make sense until we're making a difference in other people's lives for the glory of God. Can I get a good, good amen on that one? Uh, week two, we talked about finding freedom and how God doesn't want us to look free, doesn't want us to sound free, doesn't want us to act free. He wants us, what, to be free. Last week, we had a chance to celebrate as so many people came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and knowing God, not about God, but knowing God themselves and walking into the journey that is a growing relationship with God. And this week, we're going to take the opportunity to take our next step and talk about discovering purpose. Just look at somebody next to you and say, it's about to go down. Here we go. Uh, d discovering purpose, and, and our, our key scripture that we've been looking at has been Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, that says, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. I, I like what scripture says here. When, when they're not sure what they're looking at, when they can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. And how many know God is not interested in you and I brailing our way through this life and hopefully landing on success in some measure in the things and the areas of our lives that matter the most. God wants us to walk in the fullness that he has for each and every one of our lives. And in order to walk in the fullness, watch what scripture says here, when they attend to what, what he reveals, that's when they find the blessing. Now, in our minds, sometimes we can walk into uh, the word blessing and we can think about something monetarily. And please understand, uh, if, you know, you're making it as far as the money goes, hey, keep getting them checks. Let's go. Uh, but on the flip side, the blessing is not just connected to something financial. Blessing is connected to, to one word. I like to use it like this, contentment. It's the inner peace. It's, it's the joy of knowing that God is with you, that God is for you, and no matter what chaos is taking place around you, you are anchored and tethered to an unchanging hand and a rock that never moves. And scripture here specifies that when they attend to what he reveals, that's where we find the blessing. Uh, the next step in this process would beg, beg to ask this question, that, like, how do we get to this blessing? How, how do we show up to this life? How do we find what God reveals? And Psalm 16, verse 11 makes this statement, uh, you will show me the way of life, granting me, watch this, the joy of your presence and the pleasure of living with you forever. I want to highlight that word joy just for a second because it's much different than the word happiness. Happiness is something that oftentimes culture pushes on us. Hey, do what's happy. Do what makes you happy. Do what feels good. And the reality is, is there are a lot of things that make us happy. I just want you to be clear when the hot and now sign goes on. 
then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. But, but, but the reality is, is that he never takes away the calories. I don't understand why. I don't, I don't understand. Uh, but, but, but Scripture doesn't point to happiness. It points towards joy. And it shows us here that God is the one that shows us the way of life. Not a Facebook post. Is this thing on this morning? Not, 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 not just something encouraging in a group text, but it's God by way of his word and his Holy Spirit that shows us the way to life. One of the key components of this is realizing that there is a thought process that we must allow ourselves to enter into so that we can experience the life that God desires to show us. Uh, Romans chapter 12 makes this statement. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God, let who? Let God transform you into a new person by what? Changing the way you think. Let this mind, Scripture says what? Be in you that was also where? In Christ Jesus. He, He wants to change the way that we think. As a man or woman thinks where in their heart, so they what are, so they will what become. God is not after our behavior. God is after changing the very core of our character, and it starts with the way that we think. I told you my daughter this week, she was painting arms green. Come on, somebody. Uh, But in the same notion, she looked at her teacher this week, and she says, my daddy says I'm a good listener. How many know she might have lied just a little bit because you ain't never met no three-year-old good listener. Hello. Uh, I told you she ain't saved yet. Y'all got to pray. Y'all, y'all got to pray. But, but, but in the same vein, what am I doing? I'm wanting to plant seeds on the inside of her mind that get her to think this way. That in order to experience the best that God has for my life, I have to learn how to be what a good listener. So we have this little phrase that we say every day before she walks into school. I look at her and I say that good leaders, and she goes, are good listeners. Good leaders are what? Good listeners. Good leaders are what? Good Listeners, I'm repeating this over and over again because I need her to get that 18-inch drop from the mind to the heart to understand that I'm setting you up for leadership, but if you're going to lead, you first have to learn how to what? Listen, and I believe that this is what God, by way of his word, wants us to understand, that he's calling us to a deep place and an eternal purpose to live out in time and space. But if we're going to do it, we have to allow him to transform our minds and our thinking. I know you've got some emotions that cry out to you in moments, and you want to react rather than respond, but how many know that it's God's word and his spirit? that needs to shape and mold and guide and develop and not how we feel. Romans 12, he wants to change the way that we think and then you will learn to know what God's will for you which is good and pleasing and perfect. I like that. It also indicates that if God has something for you then there's also going to be something against you. And it's important that we establish that there there are three primary enemies to us discovering purpose. Three primary enemies to us discovering purpose. The the first enemy of our purpose is confusion. Confusion. Sometimes we we, we know we have a purpose. We're just a little confused (laughs) about what it really is. Uh, One of the most applicable things to you and I, because it matters to us, is sometimes that we, we confuse a career with a calling. And in these moments, again, like I said, hey, hey, we got bills. You can't just slide Duke Energy's bill back every month talking about Jesus paid it all. (laughs) Reality is you're going to see somebody outside clipping you. (laughs) Somebody, you better pay that. Let's go. But the reality is this, is that sometimes we're just confused about what our purpose is. 
And, and let's just be real. We're not always confused over bad things. Sometimes we're, we're just a little confused because we knew that there was a calling on our lives, but then life creeped in. Circumstances and situations, adversity, difficulty, you fill in the blank of what it is for you. It can shake up the waters a little bit and cause us to be a little confused. This is one of the reasons why we've installed Growth Track as, as one of our primary vehicles to helping you to take the next step here at the chapel because we want you to be clear that every one of us has been hardwired and created by God for an individual, unique, and specific purpose. I, I would hate to go through life and win at being you and fail at being me. And so in this, we've established Growth Track to help you begin to see how God has wired you. To see, hey, there's a reason why there's certain things that you like and certain things that you don't like. There's a reason why you have a proclivity to do this and a proclivity to not do that. There's a reason why we've been wired this way. And in Growth Track, we, we don't want you to be confused. We want you to have what? Clarity. Another enemy towards your purpose. Watch this. Actually, let me say this. I'm sorry before I move on uh, from that one. It's, it's important that we catch the way that God has wired us because God's design in me reveals God's destiny for me. God's design in me reveals God's destiny for me. And I don't know about you, but one of the greatest things that I think we can accomplish in this life and in time and space is for us to be able to go to our grave knowing that we accomplished the purpose that God had for our lives and didn't chase just after a bunch of really good ideas. The second enemy that, that tries to take over uh, the discovery of our purpose is the enemy of comparison. You ought to just look at somebody next to you and say, Instagram ain't real life. Like, I like Instagram like the next person, but the reality is some days you got to stop scrolling, put your phone down, put it on do not disturb, and leave it in the corner for a half a day. Hello? Hello? Why? Because as much as I love social media like the next person, I think it's a really good vehicle. There are some days where you just see everybody's highlight reel and successes. One of my favorite parts uh, of Sports Center. How many know what Sports Center is? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, one of my favorite parts of Sports Center is the not so top 10. Because there I get to watch perfectly honed, world class trained athletes do some of the stuff I do at the YMCA all the time. <laughs> it encourages my soul to see somebody fall flat on their face. Hello, y'all being holy, I'm gonna talk to this side, okay? Why? Because all of us, at some point in time, we fall prey to that comparison trap. But let me help you understand something about the way that God has wired you. It's unique, it's individual, and nobody else can accomplish the purpose that God has for you. He needs you just the way you are, with all your quirks, with all your interesting parts. He'll shave off the things about you that aren't necessary for your purpose, but he needs you and loves you just the way that you are. You ought to nudge that neighbor next to you and say, mm-hmm, he loves me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Comparison, the, 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 third, the, third, the third enemy to us uh, discovering our purpose uh, would, be, would be counterfeit purposes. <laughs> counterfeit purposes. Stuff that seems right. Stuff that looks good. But stuff that's just not what God's called us to. Let me say it like this. Ephesians talks about the church being the body of Christ. And if we all look at our individual body, it's made up of many different members and components and parts. And we all understand the role that each individual body part is supposed to play. So we know that an eyeball doesn't go where an elbow goes. And a nostril doesn't show up in the back of our heads. Otherwise, we're checking in for surgery. Hello. When I say this, I need you to understand that there are times, according to study, that 87% of the body of Christ is not quite sure what their purpose is in life. And can you imagine with me just for a moment if 87% of your body didn't know what it was supposed to do? You and I probably would be in a wheelchair or maybe even dead. 
And the reality is this, is that God has created each one of us and brought us into his body to function in the capacity and in the way that he has called us to. Some of you never want to talk in front of people, so therefore God may not have wired you to do so. Some of us don't mind talking in front of people. I don't know who that person is, but you know. But God doesn't want us to chase after the counterfeit or to try to be the square peg in the round hole. God wants us to follow through on the purpose that he has created for us. Let's take one step deeper when it comes to purpose. Ephesians calls us the workmanship of God. Please understand something about every person in this room and watching online is that God did not create us and then create a purpose for us. He actually created a purpose and then formed and fashioned the vehicle that is you and I to accomplish that purpose. You weren't born on accident. You were created the way that you were for a specific purpose, and God created that purpose and then said, this is going to fit perfectly right here. Three enemies of purpose. We find confusion, comparison, and counterfeit. Now, as we've, we've gone through uh, Scripture ahead of time, we've, we've taken a look, and there are four primaries, if you're, if you're taking notes, there are four primary ways that Scripture shows us that we can discover the purpose that God has for our lives. Four primary ways. Uh, the first one, if you're taking notes, uh, is the call from birth. The call from birth. Th- this just simply... There's a feeling that some of us have had from a very young age that we were just called to do something. We, we were called to be something. We just had a proclivity. Some of us enjoyed singing. Some of us enjoy singing, but nobody should ever hear us sing. Some of us enjoy communicating. Some of us enjoy relationship building. Some of us enjoy actual building. Some of us should never even try to build anything, even with instructions. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's, it's the call from birth. We, we just sense it. We just know it. We just feel it. It's just, it's just intrinsic to who we are. Uh, there's an individual in scripture that talks about this. His name is Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter one. This is what scripture says that the Lord gave me this message. Who gave him this message? The Lord gave him this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Listen to the message that God gives to Jeremiah. He says, I knew you, I formed you, I set you apart, and I appointed you. This just lets Jeremiah know two things. Number one, God's all that. Number two, he ain't. I know that's bad English, but it's good preaching. Here we go. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 6, the next step in this process, it says, uh, uh, Jeremiah responds, Oh, sovereign Lord, I can't speak for you because I'm too young. I vibe with this uh, because I I had the privilege of speaking my first message uh, at nine years old. And I remember, uh, I really just ripped like three messages from somebody else and just said, this is what the Lord has said for today. I had to stand on two reams of paper so they could see me over top of the podium that day. I I remember it like it was yesterday, but I remember as God was growing and developing me in the gift that he had given to me, I remember so many times that the the, the reverberating thought in my heart and in my mind was, I am just too young. There are people here that are two times older than me, and they've been doing it three times as long as I have. I am just too young. I am just too young, but I can still hear God's word speaking back today that I formed you, I created you, I set you apart, and I am the one who has appointed you. It also leads me to make this statement here, that you and I are very much like Jeremiah. When God directs us to a purpose that he has for our lives, oftentimes we look at our resume and his purpose and say, one of these things is not like the other. And God says, understand, I am not going based upon what you think or how you feel. I created your purpose before I formed you, and and I am looking to lead you to catch up to the purpose that I already have in mind for you. Listen to Jeremiah, hear from God. 
The Lord replies, verse 7, don't say I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and I will protect you. One of the most underestimated promises in all of Scripture is that God is with you you. And if he has given you instruction to carry out a purpose, walk with the confidence and knowing that if God is for you, there is nothing and no one that can be against you. And if you need a little bit more confirmation at the end of verse eight, what does Jesus say through his word? For I, the Lord, have what? Spoken. I don't know about you parents, You ever have a moment with your kids? Mm -hmm, You know where I'm going. And they're like, well, 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 and you go, hey, did you hear what I said? I just want to encourage you the next time that you're wondering whether or not God wants you to carry out the purpose for your life, I just need you to go right back to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 8. I need you to hear God in in your heart of hearts tell you, hey, Did you hear what I just said? Oh, y'all getting holy on me here. I'm going to talk over here, okay? (laughs) Hey, 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 hey. The next time you start to doubt whether or not you're actually equipped to carry out the purpose that God has for your life in the season where he has you right now, I just need you to hear his voice deep down. Hey, did you hear what I just said? Because no matter what anybody else says, what God says trumps what they say any day of the week and three times on Sunday. Hello? Hello? Mm -hmm. The second way that we can discover our purpose, the second way we discover our purpose, let me me pause there, I'm sorry, there's something else I feel like I need to say here, Uh, because it's a call from birth. I remember I was about seven years old, my dad sat me down on the edge of my bed and had an eye-to-eye conversation with me, he says, I need to share something with you that God shared with me three days after you were born. He said, God dropped a portion of scripture in my heart. And I believe that he has earmarked this portion of scripture as a part of your destiny. Seven years old. And I remember at seven, and eight, and nine, and 14, and 17, and 22, dad would consistently take me back to this portion of scripture and remind me what he felt three days after I was born that God had put in his heart that would be an earmark of my life. I don't, I don't feel like God's released me to, to, to share those scriptures on a public level just yet, but I want to encourage us, parents, grandparents, relatives, coaches, mentors, please understand that there is a quickening that God will put in your heart to speak to those whom you are speaking life into. It's one of the very values of what we do here at the chapel while you're here in the worship center that your, your students are in the different age-appropriate environments that they're a part of, and we don't do babysitting or child care here at the chapel. We minister to your children. When you see somebody wearing one of those chapel kids' T-shirts, that's somebody who has prayed for your child all week long. That's somebody who's prepared. That's somebody who is ready to speak life because we believe that it's important that we speak what God's Word says about your your children because culture is not going to ask permission and the enemy is not going to ask permission to speak his lies into your children's lives. So therefore, we partner with you that what you're teaching at home, we want to reiterate here at the chapel so that they understand that God made them, that God loves them, and that Jesus is going to walk with them through every single season of life. I was getting ready for this message, and I was texting back and forth with my dad, and I just said, uh, I'm, I'm 34 now. I just said, Dad, thank you. Thank you for leaning in and responding to that slight nudge, because it's that slight nudge that you got on probably like March 30th, 1985, that you then shared with me, and I looked to this literally just this week. I'm reading this scripture again, and I'm watching as the very purpose of my life, not my career, not my profession, the purpose for my life has begun to unfold on a new level all according to the scripture that pointed towards that purpose from birth. You with me? 
I want to encourage you, lean in. You're like, hey, I didn't have anybody to speak that to me. I believe that God wants to speak that to you individually right now. Bible says he or she who has what ears to eat, ears to hear, let them hear what God is saying to them today. Amen. Uh, the second way that we can discover our purpose is, is to grow in awareness. You, you just have a growing awareness. Uh, I, 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 today's message is a, a little bit of my own personal journey weaved in because I believe that what comes from the heart reaches the heart. And so I, I just want you to know something about me is that uh, I gave my life to the Lord in a, in a life-giving children's ministry, very similar to what we do here at the chapel. And I was four years old. I'm a little weird, so I could till, still tell you what I was wearing to this day. I was fly. Look. <laughs> Had a white button up with some gray pants and a cashmere jacket because mom said, you are too cool for school. Let's go. I don't know what they taught that day. I don't know what the snack was. I don't know what the songs were that we sung. All I knew was at four and a half at the moment when the gentleman who was leading the service that day said, does anybody want to start a relationship with Jesus? That both of my hands went in the air. Now at four and a half, what are you repenting for? Lying, stealing animal crackers? I don't know. But all I knew was that my journey started at four and a half. Now, if you were to look at the trajectory of my relationship with Jesus, it was a roller coaster ride. And before you judge me, so is yours. <laughs> but I find that in every area, the peaks and the valleys, I find that there was a growing awareness that I was created for a reason. And every, if I could quote the R&B song, every time I tried to leave, something kept pulling me back. The growing awareness that there is a purpose that God had for my life and I need to live that purpose out to its fullness. There's someone in scripture that, 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 that shows uh, what it's like to having a growing awareness over time. His name is, is Joseph. Joseph has a dream one night uh, that the nations of the world, including his own brothers and parents, bowed down in front of him. And then Joseph did the next sensible thing and told everybody about it. <laughs> Hashtag, you should have left it as a dream. <laughs> As a result, his brothers overcome with jealousy, throw him into a pit, and then they sell him into slavery. Some of us are familiar with this story, and we know that from this point, it just feels like the story of Joseph is full of a whole lot of wrong turns. And sometimes this is what our lives can feel like as well, just a whole lot of wrong turns. Hey, Jesus, I gave you my life. What in the world happened after that? Maybe you never said that, but I have. Hey, God, I, I said yes to your purpose, and my life went down by 97%. Joseph's life very much looks like this, but we find all throughout Scripture that God is taking the difficult things that Joseph goes through. He's taking the pain. He's taking uh, the pit. He's taking the accusations. He's taking the difficult moments. He's taking the pain. He's taking the loneliness. He's taking all of these things and he's weaving them together to create this perfectly woven story that God then uses to create freedom for people in that generation and in generations to come. And I love what Genesis chapter 50 he reads. It says, this is Joseph talking to his brothers who threw him in a pit and then sold him into slavery. He says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me where? To this position so that I could save the lives of many people. Can I just talk to somebody that you've got those two evil monkeys on your shoulder of guilt and shame? And they just keep holding you back from what you feel God has called you to. Can I just encourage you today? Enough is enough. Can I talk like that? Is that all right? God has said, I am overseeing your life. I am moving every 
piece on this board and I know that what you have been through has crushed you internally. But if you will let me take your mess, I want to turn it in to a message. I want to take what you have navigated through, where you're sitting right now, the hopelessness that you feel, the dark days that you've had. Because how many know that whatever's gone wrong in your life, at some point God wants to point you in the direction of somebody who is there right now and needs the hope that you can bring them because you are now on the other side of that darkness and that difficulty. Because how many know it can't just be about us? It, it, it just can't be about us winning. I'm trying to be like MC Hammer. I'm trying to take the whole neighborhood with me. Let's go. I'm trying to let I'm trying to see everybody on their way up. I'm trying to encourage everybody to make it out. I'm trying to encourage everybody I know to get to a place when you see purpose clearly for yourself, you want everybody else to get a glimpse of what that purpose is for them as well. <laughs> In the growing awareness that we have, it's also important that we uh I'm going to use a word none of us really like it. You ready? We got to be patient. I know, it sounds like a cuss word most days. <laughs> we got to be patient. It's not in the notes, but I want to say it like this. There's a scripture in Philippians that says that he who, he who began the good work, he's faithful to see it through to completion. Oftentimes, the beginning of something is almost just as depressing as the process of going through it. Because in many cases, you don't really realize you're growing while you're growing. You don't really realize the progress that's being made in the process until you usually get to the end of the process. But can I encourage you that even when we can't see the progress that's being made as we're becoming aware of our purpose, there is still someone that's working in the dark and creating and forming and fashioning and developing us into what he has called us to be. This is not just in ministry. This is in the marketplace. This is in your home. This is at your school. This is with your teammates. This is with the students that you're coaching. Wherever you are, this is in the boardroom. This is with the employees that you... This is with everybody and everything you're connected to. He who began the good work is faithful to see it all the way through to completion. I got to hurry. The, 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 third, the third way that we can discover our purpose is walking through open doors. Walking through open doors. Sometimes it's just as simple as taking the next right step. It's something that our pastor talks about all the time, and it's something that he actually highlights for us on a consistent basis here at the chapel, that, that, that oftentimes it's just a matter of us taking the next right step. In some cases, the purpose that God has for our lives is not going to come clear until we actually reach out and go, God, what is the purpose you have for our lives? There's someone in scripture that, that, uh, that eloquently puts this into work, and uh, her name is Esther. Esther is, is a Jewish woman, a little bit of background information on the, on the book of Esther. She, she has no parents because they've all died, and she finds herself as a Jewish woman in a day of Babylonian captivity. There's a pagan king in that day and time who has a wife, and he considers her to be his trophy wife. I'm just talking to you like I read the Bible, okay? Uh, so uh, while, while they're getting ready for a banquet, he nudges his trophy wife and says, get all dolled up because I need to parade you out in front of everybody. And her name was Vashti, and Vashti wasn't having it. And so the king did what the king can do. He fired her. Hashtag harsh. <laughs> he then holds the first bachelor of all time <laughs> and goes through and brings all the beautiful women in the land out and he does what the bachelor does. Apparently, I've never watched it. I'm just... <laughs> I heard from a friend. Uh, he, he picked one and she was the most beautiful one. Her, her name was Esther. But Esther was reminded by a man named Mordecai that you have not been selected just because you are beautiful. 
Please understand also in this day and time that there is a man inside of this pagan king's court who is also trying to eliminate all Jewish individuals from the Babylonian kingdom at the same time that the pagan king has now selected Esther to be his next wife. And listen to what scripture says. This is Mordecai speaking to Esther. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from, um, from some other place. But you and your relatives will what? Die. And then he asks her a question, who knows if perhaps you were made queen for such a time as this. All she had to do was walk through an open door that her God-given beauty had created for her. There's another reason why I like Growth Track, because it helps you to uncover what are the God-given gifts and talents that you have been given. And in this, you can be used to impact the lives of others if you'll just walk through the open doors that God has. I like to go on record as, as, as saying this, that too often we're trying to bang down doors that God never designed to be open. And then too often we walk away from doors that God has already opened wide for us. Can I encourage you that the next time you see an open door, assume it's a yes until you hear no? Because oftentimes... We assume it's what? No, until we hear yes. But when our lives are led by the Holy Spirit and we say, God, we are looking to fulfill the purpose and the plan that you have for our lives every single day, let's assume that it's a yes until we hear what? No. The fourth way that we discover purpose is, is, is through a God encounter. One of the scriptural references I have for this is uh, his name was Saul back in the book of Acts. And Saul uh, was a hitman back in that day and time and actually killed Christians. Now, just so we're clear, this is where I should never be God. Because if somebody is killing Christians, I'm sending one lightning bolt. <laughs> just one, okay? But God, God... God has a way of just being gracious and merciful and not seeing us based upon our shortcomings and our failures, but seeing us based upon what the purpose and the potential that he what created in and for us before he actually created us. Listen to what scripture says. This is, this is Acts chapter 9. It says, meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest and he requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus asking for their cooperation in arresting any followers of the way. We know these followers of the way now to be the disciples of Jesus. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains as he was approaching Damascus on this mission. And then a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. I just want to pause right here just for a moment and just say this, that no matter how lives look, I believe that God has set forth a suddenly for all of us. I've got some friends and some family that they're just there. If you look at the fruit that comes out of their lives, they're just far from God right now. And I look and I go, I feel they may not be killing Christians the way that Saul was. Saul eventually had his name changed to Paul. But they're just far from God right now. Like when you go through their IG feed, you scroll real quick. Maybe you don't have any of those kind of friends. You should get a couple of them. God will use you in their lives. And I look at them and I go, I feel like the further it looks like they're getting from God, the closer they're actually getting to their suddenly moment. And let's drill down a level deeper and just go, hey, for some of us in this room and watching online, our suddenly moment is today. To realize that the direction and the trajectory that we have been going is completely opposite to what God had. But today is your suddenly moment. And God speaks this to Paul. Saul falls on the ground. Jesus says, why are you persecuting me? 
And the voice replies, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go. On the other side of that suddenly moment, the God encounter, there's always a get up and go. And it's not connected to what we've done or who we are, how great and how talented we are. It's always connected to God speaking to the purpose and the potential that he created in each one of us. I remember throughout the course of my life, there have been about a handful of God encounters that I've had where I just, we sang the song earlier, the the presence of the Lord, it's it's in this place. I, I just knew that where I was, that God's presence was there and he just wanted to speak to me in a real specific way. One in particular, I was 23 years old and I was in a chapel service that's very similar to the service that some of your students will be in this Friday here at the Element. And I remember I, I'd gone through a season of life where I had made a lot of really dumb decisions because how many know that's just what you do between 18 and 23, right? <laughs> Somebody was like, and 34. <laughs> Don't judge my journey, okay? Okay. I just made a lot of really dumb decisions. And I had those ugly voices of guilt and shame in my, in my ear. And they just seemingly lived on both shoulders. And I'm in this chapel service, and the worship is like it is here at the chapel. And you know the presence of God is here. And I just dropped to my knees. And I heard God calling just like that. <laughs> And I remember in that moment that I got this snapshot of what God wanted to do. And it overwhelmed me because to this point, I thought the purpose that God had for my life was thrown in the trash because of the dumb decisions that I'd made. But I got this snapshot and guilt and shame's voices got a lot louder. I opened my eyes And the guy that was speaking that day, he looked at me clear across the room and he waved at me to come to the stage. I get there and he leans down and he whispers in my ear. To this point, he's given a lot of instructions over the mic and he's talked to the whole crowd. But sometimes when you're dealing with something internally that's very private and personal, God is going to meet you in a very private and personal way. He leaned down in my ear. And he said, there is nothing that you could have done that would eliminate you from the purpose that God had for your life. So get up and go with confidence. That was at 23, 11 years later, I can tell you that not my profession, not my job, But the purpose that I have for my life, the why that God created and gave, I'm walking in it every single day. And that was a God encounter moment that I can look back and say that there was a U-turn that he gave me. Out of darkness and into his marvelous light. I'll land the plane here with this and say that since God is no respecter of of person, please know, that God created you with a purpose for a purpose. And that purpose doesn't change based upon the seasons of life that you walk through. He just teaches you how to roll with the punches in every season. Because all things still work together for the good that, what? For them that love the Lord and are called according to what? His purpose. Step forward with confidence. Get up and go because your moment has showed up. Amen? Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much that your word keeps us tethered to our purpose no matter what season we walk through. I pray today, God, for the individual that's struggling to walk out with courage. I pray that you'd remind them that you are with them and that you are for them. I pray that you'd move guilt and shame off the shoulders of so many so that they can experience your best for their lives, both today and every day to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.